Hi, I'm Tree and this is Stitchless TV. Now in this video sewing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sew this sculptural bucket coat pattern. Right, to begin with, I want to talk about the pattern. Now, the way that I'm doing this pattern is that there are not going to be any pattern instructions, not in the traditional way. You're not going to get pages and pages of instruction. So what I have done is this. I've put the actual instructions in their relevant place on the actual sewing pattern. So if I'm going to talk about uh, a notch on a raglan sleeve and what you have to do with it, I've actually written it on the pattern by the notch on the raglan sleeve. So when you get your pattern, really have a really good look at it because it's going to have most of the stuff that you need to know to make the coat it's going to be written on the actual pattern. Our new version of the bucket coat has this inseam pocket in here. Now you can just ignore it and, and just cut down that line there so you end up with no pocket. But if you are going to do the inseam pocket, it's no extra work, honestly. You just trace out your size line and then it goes down like that so it looks like a, a dog ear coming out the side and when you sew it the side seam you just keep going all the way around the edge and just sort of pretend it's not there now we need to bind all our edges of our pieces, or nearly all of them, with bias binding, sometimes referred to as being a Hong Kong seam. Now if you want to know how to do that, we have got a couple of videos on how to do bound seams. We are ready to sew our sculptural bucket coat. Right, we're not quite finished with our bias binding yet. What we need to do now is, this is the sleeve pattern, this part here, and that's the shoulder dart. Now we made a little mark, this is the mark on our pattern. Can you see that, that little mark? So what happens is this, the fabric goes right sides together, I folded it right sides together, now it does actually say on the pattern, it's just half a centimetre, like a quarter inch. Seam allowance, very small. And we finish, we go off into nothing and finish at that dot. And then we bound the seam in bias binding. But do you know what? Don't use a special foot. You can just do that just with a regular sewn foot. So do it to both of your sleeves. Okay, so I've got my fabric with the right sides together. I've got the sewing foot on the edge of the fabric, so that should end up being about half a centimetre, sort of like a quarter of an inch. And you're going to go forward and back, and then just follow the edge there. So this is the shoulder dart, yeah? And then where that notch is, the little mark, we're going to go off into nothing when we get there. Now I like to round it off a little bit. I like to just trim it back a bit, just a little bit. So it's about the width. So it ends up being about the width of my bias binding. Now I know this is black. I didn't mean for it to be black. Oh, terrible. Anyway, so what I've done is this, what I want to show you. I want you to fold back the raw edge end 
fold in the corners, okay, and then press it all like that. So then we get this nice clean edge. And what we do is we position the nice clean edge on the edge of our dart. And because we've pressed it in half, I've got to stick my head in now. Because we've pressed it in half, it will be easy to grab the fabric. Now, so long as you're not too close to the edge, it's kind of tricky me doing it in this position, but as long as you're not too close to the edge, you're bound to grab it underneath as well. And then have a look at what you've got. So that should be okay. That seems nice and clean to me. Right, so these are our sleeves. We've done our lovely shoulders. Now the fun really begins. <laughs> So remember, there is no front and back on these raglan sleeves. But because I've done this so I push it to the back, if I just put two notches for the back bit, then I'll know that that's the, the back piece. Right, now the fun really begins. It comes together really quickly now because we've done such a good prep on our sculptural bucket coat. So this here is the back piece. Okay, and I want you, whoop, I want you to get one of your sleeves. Now it doesn't matter if you put this the wrong way, but do you remember we put two little notches here because, simply because we've pushed our shoulder seam towards the back. Now what you're going to do is you're going to line up your notches. Don't line up the end of the coat. Line up your notches, and the ends of the seams will probably line up anyway. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew and you're going to stop where that, see this bit here? There's a notch there and I want you to stop when you get in line with that and go backwards and forwards there. So off we go. Forwards and back, close off the seam. Now look, we're doing a small seam allowance. Well, not small, but like half an inch, large centimetre, something like that. And we're just going to down, we lined up our lot notches so we know that we're all good. And just keep going all the way round. I'm trying to do it so you can see. Now, that's the end of the sleeve in the armpit, and that's our notch. And you'll see that when we stop here, it will leave us with a little bit of a seam allowance of the um, actual sleeve. So just stop at the notch, okay? So I'm going to go around that bend. And stop. Go backwards and forwards in line with that notch and then come off. So what you end up with is this, which we will press open and it will look really beautiful. Okay, so that's the back. We've just attached the raglan sleeve on there and now we've got to do it on the other side. So I put the fabric right sides together, lining up my notch, and then just do the same thing and stop at that notch, okay, the notch that's in the armpit. So we've done both of the sleeves, the raglan sleeve parts where they meet the back seam. Now you can see why I'd want to wear that inside out. Look how lovely it is. Let's turn it over the right way round. Cool, look at that. See, it really is worth whoa, investing in a lovely material. Now I'm just going to fold back the sleeve so you can see the shape. Can you see that? So that's looking seriously luxurious. I thought you'd like to see how quickly it starts to take shape. So look, sleeve, sleeve. So now all we have to do is we attach, do the same thing again, but attach it to the front pieces. Okay. 
Okay. Once you've um, once you've pressed all your seams open, all those raglan sleeve seams open. I want you to put it on a dummy or try it on yourself. Okay, because you need to look at this. So what we need to do is we need to have a look at the light. So this is the back, and remember the pattern is sort of mainly cut for the back piece. So what that means is, even though I got you to shape the front piece, we need to just smooth off this edge, right? And you're probably thinking, well, why did I get you to cut that front piece? And the reason is, is because at least I know you're not going to go too low, because this is quite important how far down you go, so that our collar actually fits. <laughs> So, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to trim off just so it makes it a smoother line. I mean, it's only a tiny bit out. We're just going to smooth off that line at the back. Now, hopefully you did put a notch for the centre back because that's very, very important and you'll see why soon. I'm just going to chop off that one because I'm not going to need that. Right, so look at this line. When you are going to, to cut that now, make sure, like really make sure, that you're facing, see that facing? That it's completely aligned with where it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to cut the top one first, because I think it is quite thick. Now the good thing about doing this, it, it does give you quite a lot of flexibility to play around with the shape. So I've done that one. This one's definitely in line. And so that's that. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same to the other one as well, but I can see I need to uh, line up my facing. <laughs> when you've done your other side, I want you to open out your facing and kind of stay stitch, but really it's just in case we need to ease it a little bit. I want you to sew with a large-ish sort of stitch, um, half a centimetre away from the edge, going all the way around, all the way around. But remember to open out this facing and stop just where you got that little notch there. But I thought I'd open out the, um, the coat so you can see sort of the shape of my neckline when it's all opened out. Now what I wanted to say was, um, I've just reinforced these seams, you know, I went in and I just stitched a little bit because um, we snipped them so they might unravel a little bit. So I've done that before I do my little half centimetre stay stitch which I'm doing from there to there and using quite a large stitch just in case I need to ease it a little bit to make it fit our collar. So the first thing we need to do is we need to um, Put our fabric right sides together um, and then you've got to stitch up each end. Okay, so just stitch it up with a small seam allowance. Now it might end up that you have to change that once you've fed your collar around. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But for now we'll just stick to the seam allowance that we say on the pattern, which is a small half centimetre. Now, whenever we do these sorts of things, we are supposed to mitre our corner. I think it's safe for me to chop that off now. And then when you turn it the right way round, just fold in. Fold in the seam allowance, put your nail in the corner, and it normally gives you a, a nice clean edge, like that. So do the same on the other side. Okay, so we're going to sew the collar. I'm going to line up just one layer, the notch at the back of the collar with the back of the coat. And I'm going to do a small seam allowance, which is the width of my sewing foot. Now, as I sew around, I'm checking all the time the, the sizing of it because the point at which I must fold back this facing is where that notch is. So even though it's a small thing, you really must not go past that notch with your collar. Okay, so if it's not fitting, then stop now 
and make it smaller or bigger or whatever you need to do. This is the time to do it. Now you don't have to go right to the edge because we're going to be trapping it in. So I'm going backwards and forwards there. Now, whenever you have a curve, you have to snip into it. So we have a curved collar. We're going to have to snip into it. So that will do for now for this part. So then what you do is you fold back. So this is the front, okay? There's our notch to show where we fold back our facing. We've got to fold back our facing and make it so it perfectly matches up. Perfectly matches up with the curve. So if it's perfectly matching up, with the curve of our neck, then I want you to trace out the same stitch line that you just did, but this time trapping everything. The facing, the, the facing of the collar, everything. So, and that bit has to go to the right place too. I'm going to stop about there and then go back some forwards and have a look. So you end up with this, which becomes this, but I do need to trim it. I've got to trim it off inside, but just so you can see, it becomes this. And that's your, your collar. Okay. Okay, excuse the toys in the background. Very important, you need a hand. It's really, make one if um, you haven't got one. A really good tailor's hand. Anyway, I need to tell you this. So that piece, I trimmed it back because it's gonna be hidden in the facing. Now, when you stitch down just the back piece and then you come in with your facing, obviously this isn't stitched down. Now what we need to do is we snip into the curve all right, so snip into the curve, um, but then your seam allowance has got to push down that way for the, the facing, and then it comes up this way. This is your seam allowance, and you might want to trim back some of that bulk. And then that lays on top, and you can either do a stitch in the ditch from this side, or you can hand sew it down on that side. Because we started in the middle and our fabric is always sort of on the left when we sew, when we do the other side, obviously, uh, we're going to be on the other side of the fabric. So again, you're just going to be stitching through the one layer of the collar and you're going to make sure that where you stop is here, where that notch is, okay? Where the notch is that shows where you fold it back. When you do finish things off, well, it is a thing of beauty, no? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, th I think it looks really smart and it looks very neat. So I'm very happy with this method of finishing off our stand-up collar. Now what I've done for now is I've just put a thin strip of Bondaweb. I've cut it to about two mils, two millimetres wide, and I've put it underneath and I've glued everything in place until I'm ready to sew it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put our side seams together, okay, side seams together, and you know where we stopped sewing before, when we put our side seams together, we're going to start there, come out, but our fabric will be right sides together, come all the way out, and then matching up our chalked out notches, or cut notches, depending upon what you did, go all the way down, and then come out at the bottom. Now I know you all hate me for using this fabric, sorry, um, but what we're talking about is here. So that's where we stopped when we sewed that seam, which is the arm, yeah? And then obviously we did the same on the back as well, so we've got a place where we stopped there. We want those matched up, but we also want this line coming down here exactly matching up. 
Now where we start to sew is, like if, if it was other fabric, you can see that the stitch line finished about there. So where you've got to start to sew is exactly there. But if you can't get in there, then just leave a tiny little gap. There'll be a weeny weeny little hole, but nobody will see it because it'll be right in your armpit. Consider it to be a ventilation hole. Not that you'll need it. <laughs> and then you're going to sew out and then sew all the way down. But look, this is what you need to see. Okay, I've got a zipper foot. And I'm going to go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, because it's a bit of an important one. And, oh gosh. And then I'm just going to sew all the way out to the edge. Now don't worry if you haven't got a zipper foot. You can still do it with a regular foot. Just you might not be able to start right where all that bulk is. But don't worry, just leave a gap. So when you've done that side seam, you then need to do your sleeve seam. Okay, now starting as close as I can to there, again it's going to be a bit tricky, but go as close as you can. And also we have an opportunity to tidy up these bits, so I usually fold them back, so fold both of them back at a slight angle, like that, and then when I sew my seam, coming straight down here, I make sure that I capture them into it. Now look, I had to drive in a little bit from the corner. And now I'm just going to turn myself out and, and sew all the way down. Okay. Really nice. Really nice. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to apply bias binding, the bound seam, around the end of the sleeve here and also all around the hem of the coat. Okay? Okay, now when I talk about you pressing the hem, I don't just mean you pressing our lovely bias binding. I also want you to press your hem into position. Now refer to the pattern for the seam allowance for the hem because you do need to stick to it. Now when you do it, you'll see there's like a pivot point where the hem was angled. You have to line up, line up your side seam. Now don't take too much hem. Line up your, your side seam and line up this front bit here to get it exactly right. Now, for my fabric, I definitely need to put a tea towel on top and press. Now, pressing is not ironing. Pressing is pressing. So you want a bit of weight, and in my situation, a bit of steam so we get it all nice and flat. Now it's very important that you line up your seam there. Now whatever seam allowance you did there, you do the same around the back and around the front. So I'm going to do the rest of it now. So we're sewing the hem now. Now on the real stickler, make sure they're the same size, yep. Yeah. I'm a real stickler for sewing with the correct colour thread when you do top stitching, so I couldn't get away with doing black. Now also, usually when I do my hems, I press them and I sew on the top side and feel where the hem is where I go, but I can't be sure enough that I can feel it properly. So I'm gonna sew it from the underside, which I don't usually do. So I'm gonna get it in position, like that, and off we go. So I want to be quite close to the to the bias binding just because I like the way it looks. Okay, so we'll give it another press, but that's how it looks and it's so important. Look, it's very very important that you use a color thread that is similar to your fabric. Okay, this is 
something that I want you to see. Now, first of all, I have pressed back the facing before I'm going to top stitch it down. And again, for me, I'm going to top stitch it on this wrong side. But if you can feel it from the right side, I would sew it from the right side because um, it doesn't ever go wrong then. Now, I want you to see this. Look what happens when I pull this up higher. So the point at which it sticks out is lower. And then when I go lower, but it's only so low I can go, then it's gone a bit higher. I can't really, oh, I can a bit. Okay. Now, the mark that I made on the pattern, which is where you feed this into the facing, okay, like that, or you can try putting that in as well, but it can make it quite bulky, um, is here. But you may find that you prefer yours to be a bit higher. But that's, that's where we've marked it on the pattern. Hang on, I was going to say. <laughs> that's where we've marked it on the pattern. So what we would do is we'd feed in a bias binding which holds it into place. And we trap it and stitch it there. Now, in my dreams, <laughs> what I wanted to be able to figure out is a way in which... I could maybe have a little button there or that this ties onto something so I can undo it and do it the other way the other way around but I haven't figured that out yet so I'm positioning mine actually about an inch lower than the notch that was on my pattern so I've pinned it to my facing now I'm going to sew straight down pretty close to my black bias binding, going all the way down, making sure I've trapped that. And then we're done. Now when I stitch down my front facing, I'm not gonna start um, right up at the top, because it's much, much too bulky, and it really doesn't matter, so long as I sew it neatly. I'm also not gonna go backwards and forwards, just in case I encounter a problem. I can always pull the thread through and, and knot it off. So, so I'm sewing close to that black. Now we're coming to the bit where we, we're trapping, we're trapping the bias binding, okay? So take it easy when you get there. So I'll take out that pin. And then you want to head all the way down to the bottom, okay? Now, do you remember, we're going to fold this in so we don't see it. I'll just go slowly over there. Now, that's how I want it to look at the bottom, just slightly up, okay? So, we are done, and this is good brilliant honestly you'll get so much fun out of wearing this coat now look these are the buckety bits okay at the side and you can pull them out have them bigger or smaller it's entirely up to you we've got this lovely bias binding going on but you must believe me it does not matter you'll have the making time if you do it without the bias binding so maybe your first one, your first wearable twirl, because it will be wearable, maybe try it without the bias binding and just overlock all the edges. Now, I have no problem trying this on, so hang on a minute, I'm going to try it on. Honestly, it fits me like a glove. It's actually shower proof, because I've used this amazing coated fabric where well, you have a really good look at it it looks really good with a belt it looks really good with a belt as well I don't know I really love it thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV Feel free to comment below. I do reply eventually. See you again very soon. Bye.